I just wanna let you know that this video is part of our career accelerator course on cybertrainingpro.com. So if you enjoy the content and you wanna see the full course, head on over to cybertrainingpro.com or check out the link that's in the description. All right, let's do this. I know it may not always seem like it, but hiring managers are trying to answer specific questions when they hire anybody. In this video, we're gonna talk about what the questions are, what you need to do to answer these questions, and how you can improve. We'll first start out by discussing why this information matters to you and your career. Then we'll discuss how that fits into applying for a job and how it can impact your interview. From there, we'll move on to the three questions that you need to satisfy, and finally, we'll wrap things up with how you can improve your overall career. All right, so why does all this matter? Now, there are three major reasons why all this matters. Number one, hiring managers hold the keys to employment and who ultimately gets hired in that position. Number two, the better that you can use this information, the more you improve your job and salary potential. And finally, number three, all this can increase your interview success rate. How does this impact applying to jobs? Let's talk about it. During your process to land a job, it starts with the application. Now there's lots of different ways to apply to jobs. You can go to the company website, job boards like Indeed or Clearance Jobs, you can go to LinkedIn, or you can use a recruiter. Ultimately, you wanna find jobs that are a good match for your skill set. It's fairly difficult to land a job where you have absolutely no transferable or useful skills related to that job. In fact, no employer is probably gonna call you if they can't see you in that job. Sometimes we look for jobs that we like or that we're interested in, but we need to work to build the required skills for that job. Sometimes employers can bring in somebody more junior to get trained up, but sometimes they need you to hit the ground running. Let's shift gears and talk about interviews and how that fits. If you're lucky enough, you might get the opportunity to schedule an interview. This is a huge hurdle to overcome, so at least you've done enough to interest the hiring team or that manager. So what are the key things that you must do when you're preparing for an interview? First of all, you need to know your resume content. If you don't know your resume content, is that actually what you did or you know? Probably not. Research interview questions that have been asked in other interviews are great resources too. Use websites like Glassdoor, YouTube, Cyber Training Pro, and so on to help you out. Finally, practice answering the questions so that you don't fumble and sound like you're pulling information out of the air in an interview because confidence is key. Believe it or not, hiring managers and employers have certain types of criteria or ways of sorting through candidates. At the core of the hiring process, three specific questions need to be answered for a hiring manager to find a good hire. Something really important that you wanna make sure you do is stand out from other applicants and make the decision easy for an employer to pick you. If you're like everybody else, then why would it matter if they pick you? Managers use three questions to decide if a candidate makes sense to hire or if they should pass. The better that you can answer these questions for the employers, the more likely that you'll be hired. Question number one, do you have the knowledge required for that job? This can include the skills, certifications, or project examples to show your knowledge. This question is important because if an employer can determine an answer by looking at your application and they see you don't have the required knowledge, you get easily eliminated early on in the process. If you lack the knowledge required to do the job, you're not gonna get hired and you might not even get an interview. Sometimes employers have flexibility in how much knowledge you need, but it's somewhere between no knowledge and expert status. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Let's take a second to talk about Cyber Training Pro. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then cybertrainingpro.com is the perfect platform for you. At Cyber Training Pro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. Cybertrainingpro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. Question number two, can you demonstrate the knowledge? This can be done with soft skills and having clear experience. This question is answered partially by your resume or application and then additionally by the interview. 
Employers want to see that you can write clearly, and in an ideal world, they won't need to ask follow-up questions to clarify what you wrote. Question number three, can you articulate the experience? This comes down to the interview. It doesn't look good if you fumble your words when explaining something that you supposedly have done. If your responses seem dramatically more impressive than what's reasonable, it might seem too good to be true. The experiences you explain don't link to the job posting at all, it's probably not a good fit. Okay, let's talk about improving now. Now maybe you're really good at answering these questions today, or more likely, you need some improvement like we all do. So how do you get better? First off, do you have the knowledge required for the job? If not, certifications can be an easy and structured way to begin learning what's required. Certifications don't always give you everything you need, but it's a great start. Additionally, you must ensure your resume has the relevant keywords for the job and your skills. Next, can you demonstrate the knowledge required? Nothing kills a resume like ambiguous or unclear wording. This can confuse the reader and make it very difficult to read your resume. Next, you need metric-driven bullet points for your experiences. Talk about the money you save your company, the hours of work you reduce for people, something that shows a substantial impact. Third, avoid long-winded bullets. Too often people write these long paragraphs or wordy bullets that again make it difficult to read when you're reviewing hundreds of resumes. Be short and sweet with your bullets. Third, can you articulate your experiences? You should be able to clearly explain past experiences, but you might need to practice doing this until it's easy to do so. The STAR method is a very popular way of explaining things in a structured format, especially in an interview. It's also important to find ways to connect what's required in a potential new job with what you've done in past jobs. Make it easy for employers to connect the dots by doing the work beforehand. Question of the day, which of these three questions do you think is the most important? Let me know down in the comment section below. Remember to always think about these questions when you're applying for jobs and beginning the interview process. Ultimately, you need to ask yourself, would you hire yourself? Always be improving and keep pushing forward. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.